Hey you guys, how's it going? I decided it's okay to say you guys. <laughs> um, all right, so time to bind. So I kind of went back and forth about this. I was thinking that I would stitch on all of the tabs that I want to use, but I don't know. I kind of changed my mind. I think I'm just going to glue them on. I'm just going to glue them on and I'm also going to put eyelets on them. So, you know, anything, if you're, you know, working along and with me or whatever, and you have other things that you want to actually stitch into your signatures, it's a good time to do it before you stitch the, the signatures into the book. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I, I decided that there isn't really anything else that I want to stitch in you know any of the um like additional pockets things like that that i'm gonna add i'm just gonna use my tape runner um or glue you know i like to use the tape runner for glassine envelopes i just you know it, it it's basically like invisible i think it looks nice and um yeah so i mean i don't usually go pocket crazy anyways but um yeah, there's, I mean, there's a couple things that are, that are stitched, but you know, a lot of times if you just want the look of stitching, you know, you don't necessarily have to stitch it into the book. And it, and besides that, like if you want to stitch around pockets and stuff, um, it looks better. I think if you stitch around the pocket and then glue the pocket on rather than stitching through the page too. So, you know, if I was going to stitch anything more into this, it would have been like, um, you know, like scraps of fabric or things like that. But I just really kind of don't think that I'm going to do that on these. Um, you know, some sometimes I do, but if I'm doing a series of, you know, 16 journals, sometimes that's a lot more than I want to deal with. And that just drives the, you know, it, it just means that I'm spending a lot more time. So I'm going to add some fabric scraps and things like that. But I think what I'm going to do is do some little like clusters, some little fabric clusters. And then those are just gonna get glued in or maybe even attached with eyelets or um, what do you call them, those other things. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so I'm just at the point where I'm ready to, I'm ready to stitch these in. I want them to start feeling like they're journals now, you know, um, and anything else that I'm gonna do to them, I can do while the signatures are in the, in the book. So, you know, I mean, what you, you kind of want to make sure that you've got all your pages sort of, you know, at the, at the level that you want them. Um, someone had asked what size these were, because I talked about the, the last time I talked about, um, you know, that I had trimmed everything, all the pages and stuff. And just so you know, I trimmed all of these to between eight and a half and nine inches before they were folded, unless I was going to be folding in a pit in the, like the flap. Okay. Like this. All right. Um, and then seven inches tall. So everything is, is no higher than seven inches. A lot of stuff is smaller than that, but um, but nothing is, is taller than that. So I am going a little bit, I mean, I've got, I've got a good amount of room still in these, you know what I mean? Like, because remember, I still want to put a pocket on the front and a pocket on the back. And so that's going to add a little bit more bulk. And then, you know, there's other things that I want to add in and I don't want to, you know, I don't want it to be full already, you know? So anyways, <clears throat> I am like super lazy when it comes to binding books. <laughs> I really am. I'm just, I don't know. It's like, I just want to get it done. So a lot of times I'll do a three hole pamphlet stitch. Sometimes I just do two. And you know, when you're working with signatures where there's not a ton of pages, there's not a lot of weight on the, you know, on the binding, especially with this size journal, I just feel like two, two holes is plenty, you know, um, anything, anything much larger than this, I would probably do a uh, three hole, excuse me. <clears throat> also, 
So you kind of need to decide if you want your um, knotting to be on the inside of your signatures or the outside. So this one I did with them on the outside. And I guess that, you know, when I'm deciding what I'm going to do with that, it just kind of depends on how junky I want the book to look. You know, if I want it to look more clean and um, refined, I guess, then I do the knotting on the inside. Um, also, like with the fabric on the outside of these, I thought it would look kind of cool to just have the strings there. And that way, you know, when you get your journal, you can add charms to these or whatever, you know. Um, and if you don't like them, you can trim them off. But... Um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's kind of my thinking is like, I just feel like this adds another place for you to express yourself when this becomes your journal, you know, um, I'm still going to do an eyelet in the cover. Like I always do. I mean, I just do, I, I can't stop it. I can't stop myself. Sometimes I'll do them here and I, you know, i still might do that. I don't know, but usually I wind up doing it on the front. I'm thinking about doing book plates on these. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I thought it would be kind of cool to maybe do a little mini sort of collage inside of a book plate with just like one little word. But I don't know. I have to see. Um, sometimes I have a hard time with figuring out how I want to attach those. So I don't do it. But anyway, so this is my method of binding. And I am on the, the journals where there's no fabric on the spine, I'm doing the knotting on the inside. So it's going to be on the inside of the envelopes. If there's envelopes in this, in the signature, then the knot is going to be on the inside of the envelope. So if you're putting envelopes in the center of your signatures, then you definitely don't want to seal them closed until after you bind the book, right? So the knot is going to be right here. Um, what else? Okay, so what I have been using the last six, eight months or so is just a waxed cotton. Um, <clears throat> you, you can use waxed linen if you want. It's a little bit more expensive, but waxed cotton works just as well. I get this on Amazon. Um, they have it in a gazillion colors. Uh, it's about $6.99. It's 240 yards and um, yeah, it comes in a ton of colors. And um, if, if you guys want, I can put the link to the item in the description. So I, you know, I have a bunch of colors and I've just kind of picked them up, you know, as I needed different colors, I've, I've, I've purchased them. So I do have a lot of different colors of this wax cotton. Um, so that, and it's, you know, it's a nice size. And it's really strong. Anything that's waxed is a lot easier to tie in a knot and it actually stays. It's like, I don't know. It just, it's a lot easier to, as you're tying your knot, um, than just like, uh, regular cotton. So anyway, wax, I, I recommend a wax cotton or a wax linen. They do have like waxed, um, like, uh, polyester thread too. Um, so anyways, and then as far as needles, I just use kind of a large eye needle. If you go on Amazon, um, and search for book binding needle, they actually sell these like in a, in a pack of like 25 and you know, it comes in this little, this little deal, you know, I lose these needles all the time. So I just, at one point I just said, okay, I'm just going to buy a ton of them. Anyway, so that's what I do. Um, I try to pull off as much thread as I think I'm going to need all at once rather than re-threading my needle with each signature. So just, you know, it's basically, it's like for each signature you want, first of all, you need enough for you to tie a knot, right? Enough extra thread to work with to tie your knot. So what they recommend, you know, when I watched other videos is twice the length of the book. Okay. Um, 
what for me what that is is if i'm doing five signatures is i hold the i hold the thread to my chest and then i extend my arm and i do that three times and that gives me enough for five signatures <clears throat> that's my measuring method so anyways um and then i just use um this is just like fun foam i glued like three layers together with a uh, hot glue and um that's what i use for poking holes and of course i mean come on how difficult is it to thread this needle right it's like a gigantic hole oh my god <laughs> it's so irritating <clears throat> It got like frayed on the end, so it's not wanting to go through. Anywho, so there we go. All right, thread the needle, Jessica. All right, and then, yeah, so see, it's like three layers of the thicker fun foam. It's not the thin fun foam. If you get the thin fun foam, you probably want to use like five or six layers. So what else? Um, awls. You can use an awl. Um, I used to just use my, this thing. This was like for setting eyelets. This is what I use for a long, long time until I finally broke down. I decided, okay, well, I think you can afford to buy an awl, Jessica. So I bought this pack of them. I think there was like five. Yeah, there was like five in a pack on Amazon. I just got these a few weeks ago. So anyways, and it sticks in my my uh, foam too, so it doesn't go rolling around. Um, and then... Sometimes I use a paper clip or like a clip or something, but usually, to be honest, I don't. I don't. I just don't. Um, it kind of depends on whether I'm stitching, I'm knotting on the inside or the outside, whether or not I use a paper clip, and I'll tell you why here in a little bit. But anyways, all right. So what else do you guys need to know? So I just kind of, you know, make sure these are sort of lined up, right? And then what I do is I just set them down on the on the inside of the book line them up and then <clears throat> i use a sharpie very teeny tiny little dot and i just eyeball it to be very honest i just eyeball it and i just make a little tiny dot on each signature all the way down see just little tiny dots they don't need to be you know huge you just need to be able to see them so sometimes though like if you're working with dark colors uh if your pages are dark if you use a pencil you can still see it on the dark paper okay or like a gel pen even or something maybe even a paint pen um it doesn't matter you're you're never nobody's ever going to see that it's on the it's going to be stitched into the to the, the you know the spine and then i take a pencil and I just draw a very faint line on that fabric with my pencil. Okay. Very faint line. It's hardly noticeable. And then since I have this stitching in here, um, it sort of helps me determine like exactly where the edges are. So what I'm doing, so, seriously, I don't measure this stuff and I don't make templates. I just, um, I just eyeball it. So I, I find the center and I just make a line, a little tiny line, a little mark. And then I know I need two more. So I start, so I sort of like just split the difference and make, make my little marks. And I'm just using my pencil making my little marks and I do the same thing at the bottom. <laughs> I feel like almost embarrassed to admit that this is what I do, but I, you know, cause I don't make a template and I don't measure and it's not like all precise and stuff. Some people just have to do that. Like it's just, that's just how they work. I, I just can't. So anyways, all right. So then I, so I've got my, pages with the little dots. They're going to line up with these. I take my stack of signatures and I turn it upside down and I just set it over to the side over here to the left. Okay. 
And then I'm going to poke all my holes. So those are going to be right where the that pencil line intersects with each other little hatch mark. Okay, so I'm poking my holes. Poke all my holes. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. And then, <laughs> this is funny. All right. <clears throat> so I have my needle at the ready. Let me move these other journals. Okay, so then I'll take the signature that's on the top of my stack. And, of course, the first one, it has the little tiny envelope. Um, I'm going to do it without the envelope for, for just a second. And then I'll show you what I do with the little tiny envelopes. I, I don't stitch these in. I usually just slide it under the string. Anyway, so then turn it over. And I'm just holding on to it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm trying to make sure that nothing's slipping around and I, except for my hands and then I just poke my holes poke both holes I I poke my holes as I go I don't do them all um in advance right so then I've got my needle coming through there and then I want to do the furthest to the right because I'm starting at the back of the book and I'm holding on to the pages so that they're not slipping around. And I don't have so many pages that, you know, it's it's impossible to keep them all in line, you know. And then I go through that hole. And then back through. I just feel like it's easier to just hang on to them rather than, you know, clipping it together and stuff. So anyways, and then I always put my foam under the spine of the book when I'm when I'm tying off because I just think it makes it uh, uh, I just makes it easier so then I cut my strings off about that long because I want to make sure I have enough to hold on to with my gigantic hands and just tie a knot I do want it a little bit snug but it doesn't have to be I mean it's not like you know, it doesn't have to be super, super tight. Anyways, and then the little envelope, um, I'm going to pick up that string and I'm just going to slip it under there. Okay. And it'll stay. It'll stay and, and I'm going to be gluing it in it. I'm going to be gluing it closed anyway. So that'll keep it in place. Okay. So then I just continue on like that. Grab the top signature um, with the larger envelopes. I do stitch them in, obviously, because they're wide enough that, you know, they're it's going to catch the holes. Turn it over. Poke my holes. Flip it over. This, to me, is super relaxing. I don't know. I just think it um, makes me feel like I'm actually making a book, you know? What? I'm just making a video. Oh, in the, um, there's drawers, those clear plastic drawers in the bathroom. All right. And then I pull my foam over. That string was a little short last time for my big hands, my man hands. So I cut this a little bit longer. Put those off. Um, the wax cotton is really good. It doesn't, um, it does not really, it, I've never had it come untied. So um, kind of press this down just so that it, you know, starts to all kind of go that direction. And yeah, just trucking along, you know. And then as far as knotting on the outside of the spine um it's basically oh let's see this you have to make sure with the envelope that the flap gets actually opened all the way sometimes yeah see i wound up with an extra hole in the envelope 
because it kind of wrinkled up when I flipped it when I flipped it over. But no big deal. But yeah, so this just I don't know, this pro whole process just really makes me feel like okay, it's all coming together now, you know. It's all it's it's becoming a journal finally. Um, I had questions, dang it, and I promised that I would answer the questions. Let me think for a second and see if I can remember where I put my list of questions. Hmm. I cannot remember. <laughs> I'm sorry. So if you ask me a question and you really seriously wanted an answer, just ask me again in the in the description or in the um, comments. Seriously, I can't. I don't remember where I put the questions. I literally, I had there was like ten questions, um, and I don't know where I put it. And this would be an excellent time for me to be answering them when I'm just sort of trying to do something like this. So see, I don't know. I just think it goes pretty quick. It's not, um, yeah, it goes pretty fast. And when you do three whole pamphlet stitch, it's, it doesn't take that much longer. It's just an extra hole, you know, um, it's just an extra hole. Maybe uh, if, if anybody wants to see, I mean, there's a gazillion videos of how to do a three hole or a five hole pamphlet stitch. If anybody wants to see me do it, I'll do it. You know, I don't care. Um, just for, you know, just for demonst demonstration, I guess. But, um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I just don't think these are two holes is fine. I do. This is what I use all the time when I do Reader's Digest journals. And also, when you only have, as far as not, put, not clipping this, when you've only got like 10 pages in a signature or less, it's, I don't know, it's just a lot easier to hang on to them all. And um, I don't have much issue with them slipping around. So, all right. So that's my last one. I haven't decided what I'm going to do for a closure on these. So then if I don't have an envelope that I'm stitching into the signature, then I usually will leave the strings longer. Okay. So yeah. So when I come back in to the journal, I'm going to, um, and see, it looks good. They look, you know, they look straight. They're good. You know what I mean? No, uh, no complaints. Um, <clears throat> when I come back in to add the tabs and I actually have my glue out and all that, that's when I'll go in and, uh, and glue all these envelopes shut. So what I do with an envelope that still has the adhesive, um, I'll just take a baby wipe and moisten that and then just close it up. You know, um, these little ones, this little guy, what I actually had done with these is I trimmed off the top. Here's one that I, so I trimmed off one side of it and then, and that causes it to sort of open all the way up like that. And then I did my little notch and, and rounded it off. So, so these will actually be like little vertical envelopes. So you can stick a little tag in that way when it's, when it's all sealed up, you know, and this still has the adhesive on it. So I can just use that and close it up, you know? Yeah. And I like to leave things for, you know, this is somebody's, someone's journal. So this is just my style, right? Like I just kind of like to have lots of space for people to do their own thing and um you know like pages like this or like this 
this might be, and this is like what I, I think of as like a nice background for somebody to glue something onto that page or whatever. So I don't really stress too much about, you know, decorating all the pockets and stuff. I add my own stuff to the journals, like, um, you know, tags and, you know, envelopes and pockets and stuff that I've, that I've made and collaged. And, you know, I definitely add a generous amount of that kind of stuff into the journals, but I don't really worry about trying to like embellish the whole thing because I feel like that's somebody else's thing. Right. Um, anyway, but that's just me. You know what I mean? I know lots of people just, that's what they love to do is just decorate pages and stuff. And what I love to do is collage and I love building books. Like I, I love putting these together. I love pulling the papers and collecting the paper and that kind of stuff. And I'm just, I just love the paper. That's, that's kind of my thing. Right. So yeah. And then I'll be adding some tabs and stuff into these and, uh, yeah, so that's it. That's, that's basically how I stitch these. Um, for the ones with the fabric on the spines, I, I'm going to do basically the same thing, except in reverse. You know, I'll just be coming in from the from the, the outside of the book through the signature and then back through and then tying it off on the outside. So, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to sign off. This will be short and sweet. And, um, yeah, let me know how you guys are coming along with your journals. Um, and next time we'll do a run through of you know, doing the tabs and stuff like that. And then I'll just talk to you about like my thought process as far as adding um, pockets and, you know, how I like to place them and that kind of stuff. So, but we're getting there. So anyways, all right, guys, love you. Bye for now.